All right, so for the first problem, we have that y is the cosine of 2x, and then we want to find the, deri the derivative of y with respect to x. So here we're going to use just a chain rule. And what we want to recognize is that there's an inside function that is equal to 2x. And so then the derivative of 2x will be 2. And then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the outside function, which is the cosine function. The derivative of the cosine function is the negative sine function. And we keep the interior is the same. So we're taking the negative sine of 2x. And then we just, you know, we rewrite it if we want, but we can just see that it's going to be a. All right, all right, for number two, we have that we need to integrate this. And for that, we're going to use u substitution. We're going to make u the x cubed minus three. So if you use x cubed minus, not x cubed minus three, x cubed minus one, we're gonna make u x cubed minus one. That means du will be three x squared dx. Now we don't have exactly three x squared left over. We have x squared. So what we're gonna do is divide both sides by three and we'll get that one third du equals x squared dx. And then we can rewrite this as the integral where we have one third, we can factor that out, one third u to the 10th times du. And then we can easily integrate this because we can just use like basically the anti-power rule. So we're gonna add one to the exponent and divide by that number. So then we'll get one third times u to the 11th over 11. And this is written in terms of x. So we just have to resubstitute x cubed minus one for u. And when you, then let's not forget the constant. I almost forgot the constant plus c. Technically, I don't want to put a constant. Well, technically, I don't, I don't want to put the constant here until I go back to x because this c, when you go back to x, in other words, if I do this, one third, um, where, and then I have the x cubed minus one to the 11th, this will be over 11. So then that becomes all over 33. And I put plus C. This C is gonna be a different number. Like you can argue, like it, it could be a different number technically because we're, we were having a different function. So I mean, more properly, maybe you would say this is C1 and C2, but just be aware of that. Sometimes some professors are more strict about that than others. Um, just know that, just make sure you recognize that that technicality okay so then we let's look for which one is over 33 and that'll be d all right number three here we have the limit as x goes to infinity of uh, the square root of 9x to the fourth plus one all over 4x squared plus three now here, remember that we'll have like a basically an indiscriminate form because we're gonna have infinity over infinity, um, which we can't just find out like intuitively. So we're gonna what we're gonna do is um they're gonna divide the, the numerator and denominator by the square root of x to the fourth. So what this looks like is I'll have the square root of nine x to the fourth plus one all over the square root of x to the fourth. This will be all over. 4x squared plus 3 over the square root of x to the fourth. Now, the reason I do the square root of x to the fourth is because the square root of x to the fourth, we can rewrite it as x squared, which we'll do in the bottom here. So we'll have 4x squared plus 3 over x squared, and that's going to be over x squared. The top, though, we can keep it as a radical. So we can have it as 9x to the fourth over x to the fourth plus one over x to the fourth. Just using the properties of square roots, you can distribute that inside the radical symbol. And see what happens here is that cancels, this cancels. And so then we get the square root of nine plus one over x to the fourth over four plus three over x squared. 
Now, when you take the limit as x goes to infinity, this number basically gets super small. This goes to zero. That This just becomes nothing. And this goes to zero. So what you then get is the square root of 9, which is just 3, over 4. And then your answer will be b. And number four, um, this will be, we want to find the dy dx, and we're given the y is this function. And so we're going to just need to use the quotient rule. So here, um, what we want to do is use the quotient rule and the chain rule within. So we have the inside function, which is the x over the x plus one. I made it dumb enough to help it made it look even messier, but. The derivative of the inside was that, and the derivative of the outside is the power function. So let's first take the derivative of the outside. So what we're going to do is have 5 times x over x plus 1 to the fourth. That, then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. Using quotient rule, we take the denominator and square it, x plus 1 squared, over on top, we'll have the, the derivative of x, which will be 1, times the, times the bottom, so times x plus 1, minus the top function, x, times the derivative of the bottom, which will just be 1 again. And then we just got to simplify this. So this will become x plus 1 minus x. So we'll have 5 times x plus We'll have this first, x over x plus 1 all over the fourth. This top x, remember, x becomes an x plus a 1 minus an x. So the x's cancel. So on top, you just have 1. And on the bottom, you have x plus 1 squared. So then now we can essentially just um, kind of uh, combine. We have 5 times this, x to the fourth times one. So we just have x to the fourth, five times that, x to the fourth on top. And we have the same group in the bottom. We have x plus one to the fourth. So we got to distribute that four to the x plus one power. So we have x plus one to the fourth times x plus one to the second. So what you have is x plus one to the sixth underneath. And then the top just becomes five x to the fourth. And then your answer will just be d. In number five, we have water flowing into this tank at a rate of R of T, where R of T is measured in gallons per minute and T is measured in minutes. The tank contains 15 gallons of water times zero. Values of R of T for selected values of T are given. We're going to use a trapezo trapezoidal sum with the three, three intervals indicated by the table. And what's the approximation of the number of gallons of water in the tank at time T equals nine? Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is, um, what we essentially want to find is, you know, the area of what this is. What, basically, just the area of this. Like, um, let me draw a visual because that's, I think, the best way to, 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 to understand this. Because once you understand it, then it becomes, you know, just easy, like algebra, technically. You don't even need calculus. So I'll do my best to draw a good sketch. But what we have here is that this is T, let's say. This is R of T. We have a point at 0, 0,9. We got a point at 4, 6, 7, 4. Not drawing the scale. And then 1 and 9, 3. Get not drawing the scale. So, see what we're doing is essentially. Finding the combined area of these quadrilaterals, which are trapezoids. These are just four trapezoids. Or not four trapezoids, these are three trapezoids. You know, you have T1, we'll say T2, and then T3. The area of a trapezoid or is, the, is the average of the basis times the height. So we just say B1 plus B2 over two 
times the height h times the height h. Now, the thing is, is that you want to look at this like in this direction. The bases are the are these. This is a this is a base. This is the first and second base of that trapezoid. This is the this is the first and second base of the second trapezoid. And so these vertical line segments are the lengths of the bases. Um, the heights are this is like this is the, as they say that's h one. This is h two, and this is the third height h three. That's usually where students get confused. But once you see it like that, again, it's just simple on um, geometry. So anyways, what happens if we take this area for, for here is we're going to get that this will be that T1, the area of T1, base 1 and base 2 are going to be these values here. So... You can, I can maybe just write it like this, I'm like nine plus six over two times that first height. The first height is going to be, it's going from zero to four. I mean, this is the first height, that's four so times four plus the next one, the next two bases, which are these two, six and four. So we're going to have six plus four over two times the next height, which is going to be three, so times three, plus the third one, the two bases are four and three, over two, times the, the final height, which is two. Let me try to I hate squeezing numbers in here, but times two, we'll say. So, geez, so these, these are the three trapezoids, and you get essentially Two times fifteen, you get thirty plus fifteen plus uh, seven. Now, the only thing we have to remember is see it says it starts um with um fifteen gallons. So this will be forty five plus seven fifty two. But don't 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 think of the answer is A, because fifty two is this area. But let's add what it starts with. So it's fifteen. So fifty two plus fifteen, and that's how we'll get our answer of sixty seven. All right, and so the one, so the number six right here. So here we have the slope of the tangent line of y equals the natural log of one minus x at x equals one is, we just have to find the derivative and plug in negative one through x. So here we just used um, the derivative of the natural log function, which is using chain rule. We take the derivative of the inside, the derivative of one minus x. So let's find dy dx. The derivative of one minus x is negative one. Negative one times the derivative of the natural log of one minus x, and this will just be one over whatever is in there. So one over one minus x. So you basically get negative one over one minus x. And if we want to find it when x equals negative one, we just evaluate this when x is negative one. So we get one minus negative one. Those we use negative one over two or negative one half. And then so our answer will be B.